my brothers and sisters in Islam, today Muslims live in a very unique time in history. Muslims today around the world, and especially I'm talking about Muslims in Western countries, in Muslim minority regions in Western countries, live in a very, very unique time in the history of the Ummah. In fact, it is so unique that we do not have a roadmap for our future from our past generations. We do not know where we are headed. We do not know what the next step is. And as a result, we are in a difficult situation, a situation where we improvise rather than have a vision. And based upon the vision, we work towards a collective future. The present reality, my friends, is that the first generation is kindly moving on. And now the responsibility rests with the second in order to prepare the third generation. However, I state this fact very, very clearly, and that is that we are extremely unprepared for the challenge. We are extremely unprepared for the challenge that is there on our hands at this point in time. We are much too young to deal with these global issues resting on the shoulders of few individuals. We are much too ill-educated about our religion. We are much too ill-educated about the way this world works. We, we, we have yet to learn a lot about how politics works and how the media works and how, how societal issues work and how human mind and psychology works. To thrust these issues on a generation, on the second generation of Muslims on our shoulders to take these affairs forward would, yet, would be a, a, a huge mistake. But there is no other choice. Where will we turn to? Who will take this affair on their shoulders? Who will bear the burden if it is not the second generation of Muslims that is, that is, taking, that is, uh, that is there at this point in time? If we do not bear the burden, then wallahi, who will take the burden? Who will take the challenge on their shoulders? So it is up to the, first, up, up to the second generation of Muslims to try to reform their, their future and plan to shape to try and reform their present and try to shape their future, inshallah ta'ala. The first important point you must remember is that we must not, in our transformation of the present and in our desire to shape the future, we must not become arrogant and we must not belittle the work of the past and the previous generations. We must look upon the future by standing on their shoulders. As Isaac Newton said, Isaac Newton, you have discovered calculus and you've discovered gravity, you've discovered this and that. And he humbly said, this gentleman, he said in his humble words, I have only looked further by standing on the shoulders of giants. History shows us that it is not armies, it is not governments, it is not large groups of individuals that achieve revolutions and changed humanity. It was always individuals, single people, single individuals. And you don't have to look too far. In our Muslim Ummah, you can find individuals, individuals that change the world. One man, Umar one man, Khalid bin Walid, one man, Abu Bakr one man, only one man was enough. Nelson Mandela, from the prisons, was enough to bring down a government. Was enough to bring down a government. His conviction was enough. Malcolm X, one person, one voice, one man, was enough was enough to change the society and the community for millions of people. Remember, we don't have to be particularly rich. We don't have to be particularly educated or particularly uh, uh, experienced. We don't have to be particularly, for example, eloquent. We don't have to speak English very well. We don't have to be a, in a position of power and authority. What we have to be, however, in order to change and to change the ummah for the better is committed and passionately dedicated to the cause is that we must, or one of the challenges we must face or that we must address is our lack of references, is a lack of scholars that we can refer to. That we, when we think about who will we ask or who will we refer to, ultimately we pick up the, the, the phone and call XYZ Sheikh back in Saudi or back in Lebanon, or we go to Islam QA or any other website and find solutions for our ummah. MashaAllah. Is this the methodology of finding answers to our problems? Is this the methodology of the scholars that they would refer to Google these days to find answers to our problems? But Allah, this has never been the way. It is that we must consolidate our sources of references. And by Allah, this is one of the most, most silliest of things we do sometimes to our children. That we force them a, upon them a culture and a belief and an ethos 
and a way of life that we were accustomed to, not understanding, not knowing that this person can't eat manush, he can't eat, uh, 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 what is that, kibba, and he likes, you know, he likes McDonald's. So, so what did the second generation do? They built institutes, they worked on MSAs, they built organizations. Rather than focusing more on mosques, the second generation now, for example, focuses more on institutes and organizations and, and, uh, and on businesses and on initiatives uh, uh, that will achieve the, 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 the purpose of trying to rectify or transform or reform the problems that we are facing. So we also have large numbers of Muslims leaving their homelands, searching for economic prosperity, going to non-Muslim countries. We also have a tremendous brain drain with Muslims and talented Muslims leaving their homelands and going to Western countries, America, Australia, wherever it may be, searching for economic prosperity, a better way of life. We find that this was another factor that compounded us and that made, us, made, it, made it more difficult. So we found that another war on terror was started. And in the pretext of the war on terror, our civil liberties were curbed and, and an ominous requirement for every Muslim to feel collectively guilty for the awkward behavior of a few vigilante uh, people who, who took in the matters of the law. In the most difficult of times, he found the most amazing of, of, of positiveness. In the most difficult of times, when everything seemed like it was doomed, the Prophet found the most amazing positiveness, and this is the way that we truly should be. And this is exactly what will achieve it. By Allah, if passion is flowing through your veins, by Allah, if there is anger in your heart, and you translate that not into works of anger or words of anger, and deeds of, of vigilante violence, but you transform that into good work that will truly benefit the society. Even though this looks like a huge task or a unending road, this is the quickest path towards, towards actual victory. Most truthful statements that I've ever heard in my life, one of the most truthful statements is that all that is required for evil to spread on this earth is for good men to do nothing. We shouldn't get angry at the community, rather we should get angry with the community. Do you understand what I mean by that? Don't get angry at your non-Muslim neighbors, rather get angry with your non-Muslim neighbors. What do I mean by that? Meaning search for those common things that we all see to be evil, such as what? Pornography, such as drink driving, such as, for example, the depletion of our resources from our environment, such as from the difficulties that we are facing these days, from, from removal of security in our civil liber liberties. So these are the things we should fight together. But we must be united in understanding that yes, you may be Sufi, but ultimately at the end of the day, you have the Quran and you do refer back to the, the, the Bukhari Muslim. It may be that your belief is different to my belief in certain points of faith, but ultimately for the greater good, we must be together. For the greater good, we must join hands. It may be that you are Ash'ari, it may be that you are Salafi, it may be you are Tabligi, but it does not mean it does not mean and cannot mean that my school or my dawa or my mosque only supports. So what I call for, therefore, is a understanding that yes, you may still preach your deed, you may still teach your book, you can still call to Kitab al-Tawheed al-Muhammad al, al, al -Wahab, and you can also still call to your books if you want to. But we can learn to cooperate, and perhaps one day we can learn to appreciate, and we can learn to understand each other. And we can learn to understand that ultimately we will go back to the same God. And we will say the same answers in our grave. That is our God. And this is our prophet and this is our religion. My aim with this lecture today and with the conference that we are, that we are trying to, 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 uh, to uh, uh, organize is not that you agree with us. However, it is, it is certainly to make a hundred people speak and to make a thousand people think. And this is the minimum thing that we want to achieve. So I want you to leave this lecture today thinking about these 10 points that I'm talking about now and to make this the topic of your conversations. Not the topic of your conversations or the general topics that we sometimes talk about when we are together.